We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Point to me where the pain is. You still with me, Hannah? Hey. Yeah? As they face more heart-pounding action... Can you feel me touching you? Yes. ..and more medical emergencies... You thought you were going to die? You're going to be fine. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Can you pop that back on there again, just over the top? Hold that on. We'll have to roll you a little bit one way. Ooh. How do you feel at the moment, Petal? Ooh. What's that from? There are some new faces. I do think we work well together. We make we? a good team. Yeah. Do you think I look like you, back? Is that what you're saying? No comment. <laughs> and some old friends. Hoffman? Thanks. Oh, no, you turned on the sausage. <laughs> Don't panic, just move out me way. Body mounted cameras record every moment. Did you bump your nose? Just a kick. Come on, To show you what goes on behind closed doors. There's lots of equipment on here. There's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Look at that. People knock the NHS, don't they? And I've just wiped your nose twice. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Come hello, high water, we're coming. You should be able to turn the sirens down at this time of the morning, shouldn't you? Save waking everybody Save up. Save waking everybody up, yeah. I know it shouldn't be funny, but it is funny when you have to put the siren on and there's people about and they do, like, jump out of their skin because they're not paying attention. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> It's seven o'clock on a rainy spring evening. Crewmates Hannah Meredith and Aaron Campbell have been called to a supermarket. So we're going through a male unknown age uh, who's having a fit in aisle 20 in Tesco's. <laughs> Good evening. What's going on here then? Who have we got? Nathan. Nathan. What's happened to Nathan? He just stood there and he looked at me and he said, I'm having a fit, and then he just went. He's never had a fit before. Nathan's girlfriend, 19 year old Molly, was with him when he collapsed. Hello. How are you feeling? Can you poke your tongue out for me? Poke your tongue out for me. Cool. Let's have your finger, sweetheart. Sorry, my hands are a bit cold. It's cold outside, isn't it? Think we can get an arm out of your jacket? Thank you. Let's pop this on. Nathan, got any changes in medication or anything recently? There's been a couple of new things, hasn't there? New medicines. How new are these meds? The last two weeks. 21-year-old Nathan was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at birth. This inherited condition mainly affects the lungs, but also other organs, and can lead to low blood sugars. He has been incredibly shaky since he came out. Well, like his hands or? 
Nathan, you take some finger, some, some finger from your blood. <laughs> yeah, there's me. I can't even speak. He's just doing his blood sugar. Okay. All right, sharp scratch of your finger. Squeeze that in your finger for us, mate. Can I have a look in your eyes, sweetheart? I'm just going to shine the light in, all right? Sluggish fives. Oh, that's different. Slash sixes. Nathan's pupils aren't reacting normally. This could point to a neurological cause for his seizure. OK. You all right? Yeah. Yeah? He still doesn't know what's happening. That's probably normal for someone to have a seizure. You were just stood up and you, you didn't feel very good. Do you remember you didn't feel very good? No. And you kept telling me you didn't feel very good. And then you just started shaking and your eyes went all funny. Did he drop first? He told me he was having a fit. So how did he end up on the floor? Did he put himself I there, or you caught him? <laughs> Good effort. <laughs> and then I put you on the floor. Okay. And shouted help. So probably we shaved him a head injury there, at least. Yeah. Okay, Nathan, because you've never had a seizure before, we're, we're going over to the manor. All right, the hospital. Okay. Do you want to sit up and see how you feel? Take it steady. Have you got a wheelchair here? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, cheers. How's your vision? You see my face? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so your chariot's arrived. <coughs> Who does that sound like? Does that sound like? Dad says that his chariot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sit yourself back, bud. There's a chair there. I'm not going to forget my coat. Okay. Yeah, cheers for that. We'll, uh, we'll bring this chair back to you in a no, second. No, 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 Come and jump on here for me, sweet. <laughs> Molly and Nathan have been together for 18 months. What happened? You had a fit. You were at home. I don't know. I told you like 20 times what happened when you couldn't remember. I've got a headache. I've got a headache. You said you've got a headache now. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's quite normal after having a fit. He's got a headache now. What? Ooh, what was it? That's for hmm? the neurologist. That's for the neurologist to work out. But the good thing is, is you knew. You knew it was happening. At the time, you told me. So, it, like, you knew. What's worrying you, bud? Hmm? What's worrying you? <laughs> Just the fact you've had a seizure and you've never had one before. Yeah. You know why I think that's the problem? Yeah. I don't want any of that. You won't do. Some of it might come back, some of it might not. That's perfectly normal. Oh. All right. Yeah. Well, um, Dad's got epilepsy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's loads of things that cause seizures. Basically, if I'm hungry, I get like a, it's like a blur. You just said you were hungry and you wanted hot dogs. Yeah, that. <laughs> you get hot dogs. <laughs> I just said, I promised you. And that's the worst bit later. about it. You didn't even get your hot dogs. You've gone through all this, no hot dogs in the end. I promise when we're home, we'll have hot dogs. <laughs> Molly was fantastic with Nathan. Not only did she know all about his, his medications and his, um, his, his health in general, uh, but she was really calm. Seeing a seizure for the first time in anyone's quite scary if you've never seen one before, and she hadn't. She reassured him um, from long before we got there and right until the hospital. She was amazing. You are OK. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. The hospital's only over there. If you weren't OK, we'd be there, but no, yeah. Even have to stick in my shoulders and carry myself. <laughs> All right. You were so good. just did I just happen to? Yeah. Sometimes they just do literally random happen. It's, it never might never happen again. Yeah. It's just a scramble of the electrical signal in your brain. Oh, yeah. um, so all the signals go haywire, and that's why you get the shaking because all your muscles are being told to move at the same time. Which hot dogs you wanted, and I got a bit of stress. Oh. So your brain went into overdrive yeah. because there was too many hot dogs. I didn't, you, no, you threw them at me. 
Look at it, Molly, if you jump off first, other people will lose your knees when you take the stretch off. Seem a bit more with it. Yeah, still a bit. Nathan will now have further tests to try to find the cause of his seizure. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. For that, I was absolutely petrified. He was, yeah. He kept asking, when's it going to happen again? Yeah. Is it going to happen again? That's the biggest worry, though, isn't it, with anything that's... Especially when it's undiagnosed and it's yeah. not controlled as to what's going to happen. The other week, I had a patient. Yeah. Bought her some really, really nice sweet of them. Uh, a box of chocolates and a bo box of biscuits. Really? And a little thank you card. Do you ever get anything uh, not given to you? Have you ever had any? Um, I think the most I've had was a box of celebrations. And it's nice. Yeah. Not something you ever expect, is it? It always catches you off guard. Exactly. You know, we mentioned about having a Chinese for lunch, and some of them going to be open. Yeah. Well, if it was around about 12 o'clock, the big pan buff. Yes. Time. Yeah, I'll have to do that one time. Get put on break there, undisturbed break. Yeah. It's 45 minutes in a Chinese buffet restaurant. Yeah. Could eat enough. Yeah. It's early morning, and paramedics V. Hodgkins and Ollie Raven have already been on duty for two hours. Got a so is this class as Blackheath, or is this, this Shell's is, Corner? No, this is... It's not quite Shell Corner. It's on the verge. Just when I, when I were a teenager, <laughs> my friend used to live not too far away, my best friend, and we used to come walk to a Chinese here, you know, as you do. And we used to go and buy um, noodles, takeaway noodles with a plastic fork and sit in a park. A call has just come in. Oh, here we go. Lucky. Got a uh, male with chest pain. He's got uh, cancer of his liver. Um, he's also got a blood clot in the top right of his lung. The crew are here to see 58-year-old Stephen, who lives with his wife, Alison. Hello. Hello. We're following you, are we? Is the recycling being collected? He's being treated for cancer, but it's the blood clot in his lung that's worrying him today. Hello. How are you doing? Is it Stephen? Stephen, yeah. Hello, Stephen. Hello, I'm Molly. Stephen. Hello, this, this is V. Hello there. What's been going on with them um, with you today then? Uh, well, yesterday I felt I felt as though I'd pulled muscles. Yeah. It's just been so painful to just here. Yeah. Is that where the clot is? On the right. On the side, right. Yeah. Okay. And if you to describe the pain, how would you describe it? Um, no, I'd say it's about seven. A seven out of yeah. ten pain. How young are you, Stephen? Please. Sorry? How young are you, please? How, I like that one. How young are you? <laughs> <laughs> Better than how old are you? 58. 58, OK. So wh where's your primary cancer? Liver. Stephen was diagnosed with cancer four months ago, shortly after learning he had a clot on his lung, which he's been managing with medication. All the checks we've done um, are fine. Your heart racing's fine. Your oxygen levels are perfect. Your chest is nice and clear. The only thing is, is you've, you've had this now for... Coming on for sort of four months, and you you've not had this pain, no. um, which is a concern. Yeah. Obviously, um, the clots can move, they can break up, they can do lots of other things that that we can't tell you yeah. in your bedroom. Um, 
and with everything you've got going on, it probably is worth being seen in A&E. I felt for Stephen with, with his illnesses stacking up. He was an unwell man and he was in a lot of pain as well. Look you back up to our machines. Here we go. <laughs> you never know. I know. And there was me thinking you were doing it for me. <laughs> so. Well, I might be free, you know, if I keep him in hospital. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's an offer. That's all right. Make sure he cuts the lawn before he leaves. <laughs> Make sure he cuts the lawn. <laughs> Ollie is monitoring Stephen closely as they travel the five miles to hospital. So you were Hale's own born and bred, were you? Yes, definitely. Both. Both. How did you meet? I've known him since he was six. How have you? He was me best friend's little brother. It was obviously meant to be then, well, wasn't I had it? A, I had a party, me and my twin sister, we had a party in 1980. That was it, we just went out from then on. So. We've been stuck with each other since. Unfortunately, yeah. so, yeah. 36 years. Blimey. Is that married for 36 years, or...? Oh, yes, so I've been stuck with you longer than I Get less for murder, don't you? He always oh, says so. And, uh... I was never in that before I got married. Yeah, yeah. I've never had anyone to nag, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> Never had a need to nag anybody, that's the thing. Isn't it? I feel like I'm going to get in the, in the middle of a domestic, yeah? No, no, we've been like this. We haven't stopped bickering yet, have we? Well, we? I used to hold books and I used to not speak to him for three, four days. When he it's don't not, get not any worth it, is it? doesn't solve anything. I, I used to make my half of the bed noise. Really? <laughs> that's how you knew you were in trouble? Or it, it would really be bad if she makes so much useful work. I think so, I'd have a piece of a piece of cardboard and mustard on between two pieces of bread. <laughs> no way. Salt in his flask. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> okay. Good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Now doctors can run tests to check whether Stephen's blood clot is causing any dangerous complications. Had a bit of a rubbish six months, hasn't it? Yeah. Life can be cruel. Mm. They were nice people, weren't they, he, as well? His yeah, wife was his funny. wife was very funny. She obviously wore the trousers, didn't she? Yes. I think I need to have a longer chat with them, um, Alison, and uh, work out, see what other moves she's got that I <laughs> <laughs> may need to use. I think you're into thrash metal, is that right? Not particularly, no. Well, sing, sing along pop, really. <laughs> sing along pop. Ollie Moons. Yeah. Better just in Bieber. Oh no, you won't believe it. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> as long as I can sing along to it, I'm quite happy. <laughs> My name is Grant. I work all day. I work so hard, my hair turns grey. I cannot see the end in sight. But no one come and hear my plight. Twelve hours a day, so that's what I work. You're struggling now, aren't you? <laughs> Extra hours, it is no perk. I see my partner very rarely. You're going so strong. Oh, I just missed that last line. It's lunchtime and a new assignment is coming through for student paramedic Leon Ascari and his crewmate Dan Crutchley. 
Leon has almost completed his course to graduate from technician to fully qualified paramedic. Dan qualified five years ago. Ill, recent shoulder injury, not eating. And is that a category three? It's a category three. Okay. 4.1 miles away, apparently. Category 3 calls aren't life-threatening, but are still considered urgent. Hello. Jeffrey, the patient's husband, made the call when his wife felt unwell. Hello, is it Elizabeth? Hello. How can we help you today, Elizabeth? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yep. Yeah. Shoulder injury, was it? Uh, no, it operation, new shoulder. Okay. How are you feeling at the moment? Vomited a few times. Okay. How's your vision? Blurred. Not blurrier than normal. Okay. okay. Do you feel a bit um, confused? A bit. Yeah. Yeah. Does she seem a bit confused? As part of his training, Leon is taking the lead to try to work out what might be behind Elizabeth's symptoms. Could you tell me what this is? Fantastic. This is a silly test, I know, but it helps me out a lot. What's one of these? Fantastic. Is there any chance we can sit up? Are we going to sit up, yeah? Were you in this much pain yesterday when you left the hospital? Yes. Elizabeth is usually fit and well, but any surgery poses the risk of complications such as infection or blood clots. Has this problem, is, did it come on all of a sudden? This, what, well, what's this, occurred? this morning, yes, it's come on quickly this morning. No, it is. Well, no, well you, you weren't right when, when she came home, I know. That. I know it's in the yeah. Her oxygen sats keep uh, hovering like around 93 to 89. So I'm just wondering whether. Do you normally have that shape? She's got an upper limb DVT that might have turned into a clot on lungs. I think there's, there's something somewhere. This isn't right. Because her oxygen levels and things were low, there could potentially be like blood clots in her lungs. But then I think Leon had to also take into account the fact that she was feeling quite dizzy and confused, which can potentially be markers for things like a stroke. With your legs, can you kick up this leg for me? Lift up the knee. Fantastic. And then this one, can you lift this knee up? OK. Is that more difficult? Did you really struggle? Did it feel weaker? Mm -hmm. OK. Look straight forward for me. So keep looking straight. Can you see my fingers there? See my fingers there? This side. What about this one? There. She has got slight fast symptoms. Right leg weakness. There is peripheral vision weakness. I can't test grip and whatnot because that the arm it's going to be weak anyway. Elizabeth's symptoms aren't clear cut. But unable to rule out a stroke or a possible clot on the lung, Leon and Dan are taking no chances. Are you ready for your five-star drive to Walsall Hospital? Fantastic. Geoffrey is following on by car. Inside the ambulance, Leon wants to see if Elizabeth is becoming less confused. Yeah. Have you got any favourite TV shows? Yes, those um, USA ones. I've started to watch those. Oh, yeah. You know, the murders and <laughs> yeah. the detective ones. How long have you been having it? I've not quite finished my training yet, oh. so I've not won yet. So how long before you will be 
hopefully two, three months. I know, it's very close. Can't wait. Yes. Hopefully you never see me again, but if I do, I hope I'm a paramedic. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just going to pop that just there, just so it doesn't get trapped, all right? Get off for a ride. At the hospital, Elizabeth can have tests to see why she's been feeling so unwell since her operation. <laughs> so, that job was quite interesting, wasn't it? Because... I think there could have been quite a few things that were going on with her. Definitely a few. She had symptoms from here, there and everywhere for different things. I think I'd definitely be interested to follow her up and find out what the uh, outcome is. Yep. Definitely. You have to say about it's it. It's an eye injury. You know that I'm funny with eyes. So I did I don't have do eyes. A 14-year-old lad at night ran into a twig, and the twig had gone through his eye and snapped. No. So he looked like a Dalek. So I guess you wouldn't be too good Not on that job either. Those are my kryptonite, aren't they? Are they? Yeah. What's your kryptonite? Um, I think really, really offensive smells. So like. Proper ulcerated legs. Yeah, but I do tend to switch off my nasal centres at work. That's clever. And it, it's yeah. mind over matter. So if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. They're ugly things, aren't they? Feet. No, I don't mind feet. <laughs> belly buttons, I don't get. Oh my god. Oh, I don't like belly buttons. <laughs> but... Oh, it's making me funny just thinking about it. But... False teeth. Yeah, I'm not so bad with those, no. Dave. Nah, no. Oh. I get the proper heebie jeebies. <laughs> it's it's mid-morning. Oh? Oh, we've got a job. Paramedic Ben Fletcher and technician Lottie yeah. Stubbs have just received an emergency call. Oh, we're going to an RTC. Uh, come through from the police, the police will be there. I think this is quite a fast road, isn't it? Bridge North Road. Yeah, it's the A road, isn't it? So, Part of the A road. Mm. What do you reckon then? Do you think it's going to be a little bump, a smash, or do you reckon there's a car and a bush? I think it's going to be uh, quite a bad one. Yeah, I reckon it'll roll over. Know. Roll over. Mm. The crash has taken place just a few minutes drive away. Get over. Oh. Just don't know where they're going. I don't know what they're doing, do they? It's a lot of coppers. Mm. Where's, the, where's, the, where's the RTC? Where's the <laughs> oh, it's not a copper collision, is it? Where's the. Uh, oh, is, oh, right, okay. Is it you? You crashed, have you? Yeah. Oh. We were expecting for this massive crash, you know, police on scene. And when we got there, there was loads of police officers. And we were like, really? Where's the car? What have you done? Someone rammed into him. Oh. <laughs> we found this poor car smashed at the front end. And we were like, oh my God, what is this? Police officer Nick Slim has been involved in the accident. A car has reversed into him at traffic lights before speeding off. How quick did I go into? 
Um, not not massively. He had a, he had a few metres distance just to reverse it. And, right. It's um, a Range Rover. So. Range Rover, OK. Take you had seat belts on, yeah. Uh, seat belts on for me, yeah. So. Airbags ain't gone off. Airbags ain't gone off. Okay. Any loss of consciousness or been no, awake no. the whole time? No, no. No. Uh, Phil, Phil, all right, to be fair, he's just. Is he also back of your neck for taking, or is it? Yeah. Right now, yeah? Yeah, definitely. And then one of the other lads said it looked red, but. Okay, all right. I'm going to jump on the back and do a couple yeah. of checks out, right? And yeah. uh, we'll go from there. Neck injuries are common after traffic collisions. So although Nick says he feels fine, Lottie and Ben want to examine him carefully before giving him the all clear. Let's get a chair down for you, mate. I'm sure. Yeah, um, Come on, mate. Can I just have a quick feel down your, your neck and your back? Yeah. Just let me know. Any, any sort of pain? And what I'm feeling, or is it more around the sides, or...? No, yeah, it's more sort of there, really, on the actual neck. OK, so it falls on me a bit as well, mate. A bit off, sort of there. I ain't going to be able to get around, am I? Do you want this off? Yeah, take it off if you can, and that'll be a bit easier. <coughs> That's it, mate, so it's a bit quick for the nursery, then, OK. Any pain down here? No, no, I feel alright. That's all OK, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Lovely, right. perfect, OK. Any vomiting? No, no. Any blurred vision, double vision? No, no. That's all OK. Nick has been with the police for 12 years. For the last 12 months, he's been working as a vehicle pursuits response sergeant. Is it your first crash in a police one? Or... First one for a long time. What do you think it's long time? So what happened? You were at the lights? We were at the lights at the bottom of the 449. Yeah. Um, and the car was going to turn right back up towards Wollaston. Um, and as I was behind it, it just put it in reverse uh, and just reverse straight back into my own driver. So it was intentional then? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it was definitely intentional. It's a stolen car. So, ah, right, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah, stolen car. It had been seen earlier and driven off from the plate. Right. And I saw it on a 449, did a loop, went to turn right and he just whacked it in reverse. Go. Should we disconnect you? Yeah, you don't mind. <laughs> You're good to keep all these, though. Oh, you can have them. Yeah, yeah. Show me kids. There you go. Do you want a brave boy sticker as well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'm joking. If you've got, if you've got one, I'll have one. Because they'll, they'll enjoy that. Oh, where do you want it? There you go. There I'm a go. brave Lovely. boy. <laughs> Uh, we get out um, pull the, the lever. Thanks, Thanks all right. Thanks for the picture. As Nick has only minor injuries, there's no need for him to go to hospital. But before they leave, Lottie and Ben want a closer look at the damage done to the police car. He's done it good though, hasn't he? Yeah, good, Proper it? rammed into him. Yeah. Lost the button. Mm -hmm. Job, aren't you? Going to a police car on a crash or once. I know. Like his brave boy sticking. Did he like his brave boy sticking in there? <laughs> well, his kids like that when he gets back home, wouldn't they? Show his kids. Oh, Daddy's very poorly. He's been in a serious <laughs> accident. You ever tried the uh, the pink tea? Pink tea. Pink tea. It's like cinnamon -y. it's nice. Spicy. Spicy. Can't be a cup of tea. Oh no, I hate tea. <gasps> Why are you an ambulance woman? <laughs> Not even You're not a popular ambulance woman unless you drink tea or coffee. No, I don't drink tea or coffee. Get out. Go, I'll probably get out. <laughs> yeah. Get out. <laughs> I just bought one of those, what's I bought? I was given one of those Dolce Gusto machines. Yeah. And I bought some of the, the clear coffee cups, mm. just so I can see what the different coffees look like when they've been poured. It's amazing how much difference, like, the colours and the layers of coffee you can get. I'm like, 
macchiato, to a latte, to a cafe lait. It's, it's quite amazing. Since when did you become so pompous? <laughs> Since I got given a Dolce Gusto machine. Macchiato. It's half past midnight, and Gaz Clark and Liam Dale are waiting for their next assignment. Come on, Fatty, get your McCoys in you. There we go. Paul and hit his head this evening. Mm -hmm. Phone 111. They beefy crisps by any chance. Can you smell them? Yeah. I believe this is the right address. Yeah. Gaz and Liam's patient, Gary, lives with his wife, Barbara, and their daughter and son-in-law. Where are we going? Nice big door. Wow. Okay. Oh. Evening. How's it going? Is it Gary? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. All right, mate. My name's Liam. This is also Gary behind Hello, me. Hello, Gary. Gary, meet oh. Gary. How can we help this evening? What's happened? I meant to put the light on there. It was there. Is that literally, is that literally <laughs> all that's happened? You've gone to... Come up in the dark, you know? Took a floor, right. So you've been in the dark, you've lost your balance, you've ended up hitting the floor. What have you hit your head off? Tied off, you can't there. Out oh, there, was it? Yeah. Okay. And what happened after? Do you, you remember everything? Yeah, yeah. You haven't passed out or anything no, like that? that, that and did he get up straight away after? Yeah. yeah. No problem. Let me have a look at this. Was there a few choice words mentioned? No. No, there wasn't. Blommy neck. Dear me. Are stitching it? I can't really tell at the minute. I think... You've got a fair lump. I know. Really. A bit of an egg brewing. Right. I'm guessing you've got a bit of a pain in your head at the minute. Why well, you've done it. Can you not really feel it? No, I'm not yet. Well... I've got the drinks like, you know. Have you? Bleeding yeah, that'll make it bleed. Do you mind if my friend here, Gary, does some checks on you? I think we need to clean this up, really, before we can really see yeah, yeah. what damage you've done to it, to be honest. So we're normally a bit all over the place, balance-wise, anyway. Do you walk with a stick or anything? Yeah, I've got a stick. You do normally, but... I've got a mess, I've had it years. Oh, yeah. Put my stick in the other hand to put the light on where the yeah. thing was over there. <laughs> so all I'm trying to get at, really, with these questions is... If you've passed out or anything, if it's to do with something neurological or your heart maybe, then that's the reason you've collapsed. No. Or if it's literally you've just lost your balance and ended up in a heap. And I'm guessing you guys were straight out to him. Yes. And you saw that he wasn't unconscious or anything. No. 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 And this is going to sound really saft. You've cut your head open, but I need some blood out your finger. <laughs> Turn your hand over. No, that way. Ben's one way easier than the other. <laughs> Plenty of blood down there, look at me. <laughs> yeah, wrong type of blood, I know it sounds soft. But... Need the red stuff. Yeah. Can you so keep I... your head just still for me a minute? Yeah. This might hurt a bit, because it's just water, but it might sting while I'm trying to wipe it. So you've had a few bevs tonight as well, then? No, only a couple of points and a drop of whiskey. Is that normal for you? Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. I think this is all just dried from coming down your head, to be honest. You've got a lovely red rinse, like Mrs Slocum, you know. <laughs> I feel like I'm dying your hair. Gary's showing no signs of a serious head injury, so we'll stay at home in the care of his family. The hospital will literally just sit you there and monitor you yeah. and not do anything else. So I'll cover it up so that it's not going to get infected yeah. or anything. Can't exactly brush your hair over you, so you to hide it. That's the thing. I've got the same problem. We can avoid like hospital, yeah. then it's the right idea. But then you also get the uh, the nice enough of uh, knowing he's been checked over. Head shapes always seem to be the worst shape for doing that. Once you get round a few times, it gets a bit easier. It's going to look good this anyway, Gary. Oh, oh, yeah. This bandage, it's the best bandage I've ever done. This. <laughs> there we are. That's it. Okay. Let's see if you can manage to stand up. Just take it steady. Yeah. No, no repeating what's happened. <laughs> you okay? Do you want to sit back then? 
There's an ECG tracing of your heart there. Yeah. I'll leave it here because obviously if the wife argues you haven't got a heart at some point, you can actually prove it in writing. You have actually got one. Try and get some rest now. Take care, Gary, all right, mate? Yeah, yeah. I love his mentality. But what happened? Well, being an idiot, went to turn the lights on, but it was nowhere near where my hand was. I just fell over, yeah. Floor clumsiness. Another day, well done. Another dollar. Yes. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> Nathan, who collapsed in the supermarket, had a neurology referral after a clear CT scan in hospital. No neurological issues were found. The experts think he fainted and convulsed due to low blood pressure. He and Molly are hoping to find out more so they can lessen the chances of it happening again. X-rays showed the good news that Stephen's blood clot had dispersed. Doctors put his chest pain down to a nasty muscle strain. He's still receiving treatment for his liver cancer and is currently feeling well. 70-year-old Elizabeth, who was unwell following a shoulder operation, was diagnosed with pneumonia, a kidney infection and a bladder infection. She spent three nights in hospital but is now home again and feeling much better. Police officer Nick, whose car was deliberately rammed, is still experiencing neck pain but he's managing it with painkillers and hasn't needed any time off work. Gary, who fell and bumped his head at home, is now fully recovered and hasn't had any more problems finding the light switch. Stick your bum out. Oh, yeah, the lights That's are that it, bright, yeah. were they, love? love. Cover Everyone's your eyes while you're driving. Jeez. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know what some people do. 